Hi friends, welcome back to our tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series and then starting today we will be learning about forms in Angular. Forms are very important part of any web application or any project that you are building. Uh, some of the common examples of forms are login form, registration form, or order, checkout. All these are different forms which we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So forms are very, very integral part of any application and it's important that we learn it thoroughly end-to-end. -end. Welcome back. My name is Sridhar. I have over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer. And I'm here to share my knowledge on modern technology stack on Angular, Node, Express, MongoDB. I'm also here to learn from you all. So during the course of this tutorial series, if you have any questions, comments, queries, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. <coughs> I'm putting in a lot of hard work in compiling these questions and tutorials for you. So please support me by subscribing and liking the videos. Thank you in advance. A lot of you have requested me to create a full playlist on Angular 9 where I'm covering from basic to advanced. So I've created a playlist for you. It's called Angular 9 Tutorial for Beginners. And there are around 45 plus tutorials so far, right from basic to the advanced level. So make sure you check out the playlist link in the description box below. All right, so we started with learning Angular forms. In the previous episode, we learned how to install Bootstrap framework in Angular application. That's what we will be using to build our forms in this um, series, at least of uh, Angular forms. So today we'll focus on ang forms in Angular. That is this tutorial. Make sure you have seen the previous videos just to be in context. So what are forms? Forms are a very integral and essential building block of almost all apps. You can have websites, you can have uh, web pages which don't have forms, but they will be mostly static. Whenever we interact with user uh, data or data we have blown from the user or we want to process some kind of dynamic data, forms are an essential and integral part of it. Some of the common examples of forms that we have seen are login, forgot password, registration, checkout form, contact us page, lead. So any basically all of these operations involves forms. Some, some may involve two fields, some may involve 10 fields. But the idea is a form is a collection of form fields. So forms allow us to gather information and data from users. So we can request uh, some kind of data which user will fill in and hit submit and we will receive that data. So that's basically the processing of the form. Uh, it's a good way to interact with the users and almost all websites will need some kind of forms in some or the other way. And we can use any kind of CSS framework of our choice in our forms or in our application. Uh, we can use Bootstrap, we can use Material Design. Uh, for this uh, tutorial purpose, I'm sticking to Bootstrap. Um, if you want me to cover something on Material Design, please do let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to add that as well. Now, there are two types of forms in Angular. There are two important types in terms of how they behave with the user in terms of how the so for the end user, it's just a form, right? But how we process the data internally in our application becomes the basis of it. <clears throat> so there are two types of forms. Uh, one is template driven forms. The other is reactive forms, also known as dynamic forms or also called as model driven forms. So these are the two different types of forms. We'll explore them. We'll learn about them in detail in coming tutorials, but understand now that there are two different options we can use. Now, Angular framework as such has a lot of support for forms. Like for example, Angular provides us with two-way data binding. It provides us with change tracking. It provides us with validation. It provides us with error handling. It provides us help with unit testing. So there is a lot of uh, an ecosystem and peripherals in Angular itself, which will help us to build our forms. Let's talk a little bit about the forms in general. So like I said, there are two, uh, two different types of forms. One is template driven forms. The other is reactive forms. Uh, these are just introduction. I will cover each one of this in detail in the coming sections. So just understand what these are 
and we will learn more hands on in the next tutorials. So template driven forms, they are easy to use. Template driven forms are simple and straightforward. All the validations form elements are all defined in the template file. That means all of the majority of the code is written in your HTML file or in the template file. To work with template driven forms, we will need to import a module called forms module. Now in reactive forms, all the form elements, user interactions, validations are handled in the component class and not in the template. Now we have to use something called form group and form control. Now we can control better data binding uh, since everything is in the component. We can have stricter interfaces that uh, works well with our form and also to make sure that there are proper validations, patterns, matching and much, much more we can do with that. Now we will need to import uh, something called um, the reactive forms module. That's what we have to use when we are doing reactive forms. It's flexible, um, allows us to define complex uh, requirements of the forms and that's where the beauty comes in. So more logic is written in the component class and less in the HTML template itself. So that's the beauty, that's the high level uh, distinguishing between template driven forms and reactive forms. Uh, the end user will not see any difference, right? It's how we process the forms is the difference. So we will learn all about it um, in the coming tutorials where we will do some hands-on examples. Uh, a question that is often asked is, which is better, right? Uh, which is preferred um, template driven forms or reactive forms? So that's a question that a lot of people um, also have that in mind, which one should I use for my applications? Which is good for my application? So the answer is really that it depends, right? Uh, on the kind of requirements you have on your project. Now, template driven forms are good if your application forms are very simple and straightforward. If it's the, the form fields are static and have no major complex validations, right? If your form is straightforward, simple, you, can, you should prefer template driven forms and not complicate your application. But if your application is something which is requiring a complex uh, kind of pattern, validations, security, uh, using reactive forms makes much sense. Since because there is so much dependency, validations, and there are dynamic form generations based on preferences, that's where reactive forms is very, very handy and useful. All right. So those are the key differences, uh, how you should approach. Uh, some of the key examples of template driven forms would be a contact us form, right? It's straightforward, simple, nothing major fancy, just few form fields and we are done. But reactive forms like a checkout form or an order placement form, which has credit card processing, uh, capture, some complex things like two way authentication. Uh, so those are the things where reactive forms uh, comes into picture and it's very, very handy and useful. We'll cover all about it in the next tutorial. Uh, starting next tutorial, we will do some hands-on on, on template-driven forms. So make sure you check it out. If you haven't checked, uh, subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode of template-driven forms.